The U.S. Navy's dominance may be slipping. Once considered untouchable, U.S. aircraft carriers now face an unprecedented threat on the high seas. As China's military power surges with advanced missiles, hypersonic weapons, and a strategy designed to keep U.S. forces at bay, the balance in the Indo-Pacific is shifting. In the Taklamakan Desert, China has built mock-ups of U.S. aircraft carriers and Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, including replicas of the USS Gerald R. Ford for target practice. This isn't new. Since at least 2019, China has been conducting similar exercises. The message is clear. China is preparing its forces to neutralize U.S. naval superiority in the event of a conflict, especially in the critical South China Sea. But the U.S. Navy isn't standing still in the face of these growing threats. It has already begun rolling out new technologies to counter them. Today, we'll take a look at the innovations they're working on to maintain their edge across the global waters. Before we dive into the technologies, let's first look at what the U.S. Department of Defense and military experts have identified as the core threats from China's Anti-Access Area Denial, or A2AD, strategy. This strategy refers to tactics and technologies designed to prevent enemy forces from entering or operating freely in key areas, particularly aiming to deter large assets like aircraft carriers and surface ships. In its 2023 report, the Department of Defense highlighted China's military advancements, particularly how the People's Liberation Army is being used to assert Beijing's power. The report underscores China's preparation for conflict in the Indo-Pacific, especially its efforts to counter U.S. intervention in territorial disputes like those concerning Taiwan. A critical part of this strategy involves building a buffer zone in areas like the South China Sea, where A2AD capabilities could hinder U.S. forces from responding swiftly in the event of conflict. A 2024 Congressional Research Service report also emphasized China's rapid naval modernization, noting its fleet is expected to grow to 395 ships by 2025 and 435 by 2030, compared to the U.S. Navy's projected 290 ships by the same year. Now let's take a closer look at the key components of China's anti-access area denial strategy, which combines ballistic missiles, hypersonic weapons, drones, and electronic warfare. One of the most notable weapons is the DF-21D Carrier Killer, a medium-range ballistic missile designed specifically to target U.S. aircraft carriers. With a range of about 930 miles, it can strike carriers in the Western Pacific from mainland China. Its ability to maneuver mid-flight makes it difficult to intercept, leaving U.S. carriers vulnerable. Another critical asset is the DF-26, an intermediate-range ballistic missile with a range of up to 2,485 miles. Capable of targeting both land and naval assets, the dual-threat DF-26 can carry either conventional or nuclear warheads, allowing China to engage U.S. forces across various scenarios. Its range puts U.S. bases like Guam and distant ships at risk. China has also developed hypersonic weapons, like the DFZF, a glide vehicle that can travel at speeds over Mach 5 and maneuver unpredictably. This makes it nearly impossible for current defense systems to track or intercept. China's advancements in drones and electronic warfare add further complexity to U.S. naval defense. Low-cost drones deployed in swarms can overwhelm U.S. ships through surveillance or kamikaze-style attacks, outpacing air defense systems. Meanwhile, China's electronic warfare capabilities are designed to disrupt U.S. communications, radar, and missile guidance systems, weakening U.S. forces' ability to coordinate and respond effectively. Just a quick moment before we unveil the rest. If you're new here, consider subscribing to this channel. Stay up to date and never miss out on the latest insights. As mentioned, the U.S. Navy is well aware of the growing threats posed by China's advanced strategies. Despite their formidable size and firepower, even the Navy's largest aircraft carriers and heavily armed escorts struggle to defend against multiple simultaneous attacks. The USS Gerald R. Ford, the Navy's most advanced aircraft carrier, typically sails with a carrier strike group of 10 or more ships. These ships provide layered protection, with at least two Arleigh Burke-class destroyers playing a crucial role in air defense. Equipped with advanced radar systems, these destroyers can detect incoming threats from over 200 miles away and are armed with surface-to-air missiles to intercept aircraft, missiles, and drones before they reach the carrier. In addition to long-range defense, the strike group is equipped with close-in weapon systems like the Phalanx CIWS, 
a radar-guided 20mm Gatling gun that fires up to 4,500 rounds per minute, taking down missiles and aircraft that penetrate the outer defenses. These multi-layered systems make the strike group a formidable force. However, even with these capabilities, carriers face serious challenges in today's environment. A major limitation is the depth of magazine issue, the limited number of defensive missiles a ship can carry. While the Phalanx CIWS can be replenished at sea, larger missiles needed for intercepting cruise missiles and drones must be refueled and reloaded in port. This creates a vulnerability in extended engagements, as a strike group can run out of interceptors during battle, leaving it exposed. Adversaries like China are aware of this and may exploit it with swarming attacks, launching large numbers of missiles, drones, or other threats simultaneously to overwhelm the defenses. So what's the solution? Recognizing these vulnerabilities, the U.S. Navy has accelerated efforts to develop advanced defensive systems that can tackle modern threats. To boost protection, the Navy is turning to innovative technologies like directed energy weapons, DUES, including laser systems and high-power microwave technologies. These cutting-edge solutions provide a crucial layer of defense, especially against the overwhelming number of missiles and drones that traditional systems struggle to counter. Let's first take a closer look at laser systems, how they work and why they're so valuable. A laser weapon is a type of dew that uses focused beams of light to neutralize threats. Unlike conventional weapons that rely on physical ammunition, such as missiles or bullets, laser systems deliver concentrated electromagnetic energy. This energy is directed at a specific target, generating intense heat to disable or destroy it. When fired, a laser emits a coherent beam of light, meaning the light waves are perfectly aligned, allowing it to stay sharply focused over long distances. This concentrated light quickly heats up and damages critical parts of the target, often generating enough heat to melt or burn through its structure, causing it to fail. One of the primary advantages of laser weapons is their speed of light engagement. Since the beam travels at light speed, it can hit targets almost instantly, making it ideal for countering fast-moving threats like missiles or drones. While traditional weapons take time to reach their target, lasers respond immediately, making them highly effective in defending against multiple simultaneous attacks. Another benefit is that laser systems don't require physical ammunition. They use electric power to generate the beam, meaning they can keep firing as long as there is a power source. This provides laser weapons with a virtually unlimited magazine, making them especially efficient when dealing with large numbers of incoming threats. One of the first laser systems tested by the U.S. Navy was the ANSEQ-3 laser weapon system, deployed aboard the USS Ponce in 2014. This 33-kilowatt system demonstrated its potential by successfully destroying drones and small boats in live fire tests, serving as a precursor to more advanced laser systems. Building on this, the ODIN Optical Dazzling Interdictor Navy system was installed on the USS Dewey in 2020. ODIN is a lower-powered laser that disrupts enemy sensors, particularly on drones, by dazzling or disorienting them, adding another layer of protection without direct physical damage. A more powerful system is the Mark II Mod Zero, deployed aboard the USS Portland, an amphibious transport ship. With 150 kilowatts of power, it is capable of disabling small boats and drones from greater distances. In 2020, the USS Portland made history by successfully using this laser to shoot down a drone in the Pacific Ocean, marking one of the Navy's first operational uses of high-powered laser technology. Among the most advanced systems in use today is Helios, high-energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance, developed by Lockheed Martin. This 60-kilowatt laser is effective against drones, small boats, and some missiles. Helios also incorporates an optical dazzler to blind or disrupt enemy optical systems and features advanced surveillance sensors to track incoming threats, improving the ship's situational awareness. In 2022, Helios was installed aboard the USS Preble, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, and fully integrated with the ship's Aegis combat system, providing both offensive and defensive capabilities. It has the potential to scale up to 150 kilowatts or more, enhancing its effectiveness against larger threats like cruise missiles and high-speed targets. Future versions could be deployed on larger vessels, including aircraft carriers and amphibious assault ships, further bolstering fleet defense. Another critical project is the High Energy Laser Counter Anti-Ship Cruise Missile Program, or HELCAP. 
which is developing a 300-kilowatt laser specifically designed to intercept and destroy anti-ship cruise missiles. Cruise missiles built to withstand high-speed flight often feature heat-resistant coatings and thermal shielding. Lasers targeting these missiles need significantly more energy than what is required for smaller targets like drones. The laser must sustain enough heat on key areas, such as the warhead, fuel tank, or guidance system, to disable the missile effectively. Factors like air turbulence, humidity, dust, and smoke can interfere with the laser's path, reducing its impact. Hellcap addresses this by using higher energy levels to ensure enough power reaches the missile, even in challenging conditions. Currently, this weapon is still in testing, but once fully developed, it will be integrated into the Surface Navy Laser Weapon System, significantly improving the Navy's ability to defend against a broad range of missile threats. Now, let's shift focus to the high-power microwave systems. An HPM weapon uses bursts of microwave energy to disable or destroy the electronic systems inside a target. Unlike traditional weapons that rely on physical impact or explosions, these technologies attack the technology within enemy equipment, making them highly effective against devices like drones, missiles, and radar systems. When fired, an HPM device emits a powerful burst of electromagnetic energy in the form of microwaves. These microwaves can penetrate electronic devices, causing short circuits or overwhelming their components with energy, leading to system failure. For instance, a drone might lose control or a missile's guidance system could be disrupted. Since these weapons target the electronics rather than the structure itself, they can neutralize a threat without needing to physically destroy it. One major advantage is their ability to engage multiple systems at once. Unlike lasers, which focus on a single target, the microwave beam can cover a wider area, allowing it to neutralize several threats simultaneously. This makes them particularly effective against drone swarms or groups of incoming missiles where numerous targets need to be handled at the same time. Similar to laser systems, HPM weapons rely on electric power to generate the microwaves, meaning they can continue firing as long as they are connected to a power source. A key program focused on developing this technology is Project Meteor, led by the Office of Naval Research. Project Meteor gained prominence with its inclusion in the U.S. Navy's fiscal year 2025 budget, where it was highlighted as a significant initiative for the development of directed energy weapons. The primary goal of the project is to create a system capable of neutralizing anti-ship ballistic missiles, such as China's DF-21D carrier killer. The Navy plans to begin testing the first Meteor prototype aboard a vessel by 2026. These trials will include open-air tests at sea to assess the system's effectiveness against targets like drones and missiles. Additionally, the Navy will conduct evaluations to ensure the system does not cause electromagnetic interference and can seamlessly integrate with other critical ship systems. If successful, this project will mark a significant leap forward in naval defense, providing the U.S. Navy with an enhanced layer of protection. These directed energy technologies hold the potential to reshape naval warfare and secure the U.S. fleet's dominance in a shifting global landscape. Whether these innovations can truly counter the complex, evolving threats posed by adversaries like China remains a crucial question for the future of naval power.